Welcome everybody to our virtual Holy Week service. We miss being with you every day at noon, but we're so thankful for the Waldensian Presbyterian Church offering to stream these services, offering to uh, do something that allows us to come together as community even at a time when we can't come together physically. So thank you for putting all this together, Kevin and all those that are working uh, diligently to make sure we can see these services each day at noon. Today, we're going to be talking about the I am statement of Jesus, I am the light of the world. And look at what that means and how that affects us, especially in the midst of the journey of Holy Week. But before we do that, I'd like to pray for us, and then we'll look at John chapter 8 together. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather virtually. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as community, even in times where we can't physically come together in community. I thank you for all the faithful servants in this community who continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray blessings and safety upon them and their families. And we look forward to a time where we can come back together under the same roof, praising you for healing and praising you together with one voice. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. If you do want to grab a Bible, we will be in John 8 today. And this is an unfamiliar story from John chapter 8. So you may notice the beginning of John chapter 8 has a more famous story. The story of a woman caught in adultery. But before I get there, I want to tell a story. It was uh, several years ago. I had an intern and my wife, and we were traveling in New York City. And we were doing some leg work for a mission trip that we were going to lead in the fall. And we had a free evening one day while we were there, and the intern was a giant musical theater fan. And I had never been to a Broadway show. My, my wife had been, and our intern had never been. And we knew that it would just bring her so much joy if we were able to get some Broadway tickets. So we did. We went to the tickets booth there in Times Square and bought some discount Broadway tickets, and I didn't know what to expect. So we got to the theater, and the first thing I noticed about the theater is that it was a lot smaller than I would have thought, and it was a lot darker than I would have thought, and we were a lot closer to the stage than I would have ever thought. And our usher showed us to the seats, and we sat down, and she said to us one thing. She said, turn your phones off. And then she went back and said, now I didn't say turn them on silent or turn them on vibrate. She said, I want you to turn them off. And later we realized why. Because even in a theater with hundreds and hundreds of people, when it's completely pitch black, the light of one cell phone will be seen by everybody in the theater. And if, if you were that person, if you were one of those people who didn't turn your phone off, then an usher would come down and point you out with a flashlight so that everybody around knew that you were the reason that there was a distraction in the theater. And it was kind of a shameful thing. See, no amount of darkness can ever overcome one flicker of light. John's gospel had started like this in John chapter 1. We read these words, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness did not overcome it. By the time we get to John 8, Jesus is saying these words about himself, explicitly speaking about who he is and how he relates to the world. So let's hear these words from John 8, 12 through 20. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You're testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid because I know where I've come from and where I'm going. But you, you don't know where I came from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet, even if I do judge, my judgment is valid. For 
It is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple. But no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. Most of us are familiar with one light of the world statement from the Bible, and it's not this one. In Matthew 5, when Jesus is speaking in the Sermon on the Mount, he looks to his disciples and he says, you're the light of the world. But here the message is very different. Jesus is saying about himself, I am the light of the world. This passage from John chapter 8 is never in the Revised Common Lectionary. So if your church follows the lectionary, then this passage is never read on any Sunday in the three-year cycle. The setting here is very different. In Matthew 5, the setting is very pastoral and teaching, and here it's very confrontational. If you've been reading along in John, just to give you some context for where this passage is, beginning in chapter 7, Jesus has started this series, there's this series of conflict stories where Jesus is in conflict with his own brothers and then the religious leaders, and then after backing away when he's tried to when they try to arrest him near the end of John chapter 7, he backs away, but then when he shows back up again, his teaching is still the same. See, Jesus is in Jerusalem, like all good Jews, for a festival. He's there for the festival of booths, or the festival of tabernacles. And this is a time where the people of Israel all came to Jerusalem to celebrate the fact that God had been with them, providing them safety and security, as they came out of Egypt through the Exodus into the Promised Land. So there were a lot of crowds around, and this would have been a time where Jesus could have gained a lot of followers with his message, but it was also a time where the religious leaders could publicly shame him in front of a lot of people. When the first attempt to arrest him fails, Jesus gives some time for things to cool off, and then he comes back, and he says this, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. What does light do? It really only does one thing. It overcomes darkness. That's its entire job. And when the presence of Jesus comes into our lives, we understand that things have to be illumined, even the deep, dark corners of our lives, that we want to hold secret and close and hidden from everybody else. Jesus illumines those things. And we see ourselves for who we are. This is the message of Lent. This is the message of Holy Week. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he is the light of the world for you and me and everyone. And he illumines those things in our lives we want to keep secret. A couple of weeks ago here at the church, we changed out some light bulbs. <clears throat> we rewired some fixtures, and in the entryway to our daycare, we had old dim fluorescent light bulbs and we rewired those and changed them out to be more energy efficient. We put in LEDs and we flipped the switch on and we noticed wow these things are awesome and we're looking up and they're twice as bright and we see all the things, all the light that's coming out of the fixtures and we're amazed and then we look down and then we look around and we notice well now the walls look dingy, well now the floor looks dirty well now, you know what this means? This means we have more work to do. And this is exactly what the light of Christ does to us. The light of Christ illumines what we couldn't quite see before, that we didn't quite understand. So last Saturday, Alan and I spent the day repainting that entryway so that now it's like it should. It looks clean and nice as we welcome families into our, into our church. Light often reveals difficult truths. 
but the light of Christ is also liberating. The light of Christ is a purifying light. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, this isn't a statement of condemnation. No, it's a statement of liberation, even in the midst of difficulty. This is true for us not only as individuals, but it's also true for our institutions. The Me Too movement, as it gained traction and steam in our society, began to unearth terrible and awful things in the entertainment industry, and then in the corporate world, and then in the church. These are things that had to be brought into the light so that standing so that these things that have been allowed to hide in the corners for so long would no longer be allowed to hide. See, as long as things remain shrouded in darkness, there can be no hope or healing. The only I am statement that Jesus made that makes it into two stories. It's here in John chapter 8. And then it's in the next chapter, John chapter 9. Jesus happens upon a man born blind. And as he's grabbing some mud to put on the eyes of the man and giving him instructions to go and be healed, he says this. He says, I am the light of the world. Reinforcing the truth that it's only his presence in which we see clearly. It's only his presence that leads us to repentance and healing and new eyes. It's only through his presence that he looks into us and sees the impurities and brings hope and brings sanctification into our hearts. It's not church leaders. It's not even the church. While those things can be used by God, it is Christ himself that comes to shed light on our hearts. So that we are seen for who we are and then purified with his holy light. Part of the festival of tabernacles or the festival of booths in Jerusalem at that time included a nighttime celebration where they would light up these giant lamps in the temple courtyards. And they would be seen for miles and miles and miles. And historians tell us that this was one of the brightest sights in the ancient world. So that every courtyard in Jerusalem was illumined with light from the temple. So that everybody could look outside their window and see light emanating from the temple. From the place where humanity was able to mingle with God, the temple. The place where atonement could be achieved, the temple in the midst of this celebration, Jesus says, that's not the light. That's not the light. I am the light of the world. And if you follow me, you'll never walk in darkness again. Because he is Emmanuel, God with us. The question of Lent, and, and that question is amplified in Holy Week, is this. Am I willing to walk in the light? Am I willing to have my darkness illuminated and see those places in my life that I know need healing and repentance? Am I willing to have myself exposed? Am I willing to confront sin and allow the purifying light to bring healing? Or will I retreat back into the darkness? If we're following the journey of Jesus in Holy Week, then we must follow it to the cross. And the cross is the place where sin goes to die so that we can be raised to walk in newness of life. And this time of year, as we're all quarantined and held up in our homes for the common good, it gives us a lot of time to think. It gives us maybe more time than ever to be focused on these things, to say, Jesus, illumine me. Show me how you're the light of the world. Transform me, change me, go to those dark places and lead me to repentance so that I may walk with you in newness of life. As we celebrate Holy Week, 
and journey toward Easter together. It is my prayer that we would walk alongside Jesus through the cross so that that light can be realized in all of our lives. Only then can we know the will of our Savior and the will of our Father in heaven. Let's pray. God, shine light on the places that we've been hiding. God, shine light on the places that we don't want anyone to see. Like the junk rooms in our own homes, we think if we close the door, then nobody will ever know. But God, you came to liberate us from these things. And we pray that through the presence of Christ in our own life, through the light that is shown in the darkness, that we will be purified and liberated from our sin as we are led toward the cross this holy week. And we thank you for the miracle of the resurrection that brings new life and new light for us to shine into the world. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you the rest of this holy week, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.